the Colorado. For thousands of years, this great river thundered freely through Glen Canyon. This is an area where man's intrusion on a grand scale has been the source of a 40-year-long debate. Since its completion in 1963, the Glen Canyon Dam has been diverting water from the Colorado to farms, ranches, cities and towns in several American states. Turbines from the Great Dam provide electricity to areas of California, Arizona and Utah. But Glen Canyon Dam is blocking Mother Nature's flow. I, as an indigenous person, feel that the river should run freely. People have taken it upon themselves to create an instinct that is not in their blood. Here, in southern Utah, the Great Dam has altered the timeless flow of the Colorado River. In the process, it has eliminated the natural cycle of annual spring floods. These annual floods had the positive effect of forming sandbars along the river. Now, virtually all sediment is trapped above the Great Dam. Without any sediment being deposited downstream, sandbars have been eroding and steadily disappearing, which in turn is reducing the backwater habitat available for numerous species. This is a, a backwater, which is a, a nursery habitat for young fish, and it's a habitat that forms in association with sandbars, such as we see out along the, along the mainstream river. It's an environment that warms substantially above the, above the river, so it's an environment that, is, that provides good warm water habitat for the warm water native fish. As ecological problems have increased, Glen Canyon Dam authorities have opted to borrow from the design of Mother Nature. In March 1996, they experimented with a controlled high flow release by shooting huge amounts of water through four giant steel tubes at the base of the dam. The man-made flood was designed to reproduce the dynamics of a natural river flow. Records show that the 1996 controlled release helped the downstream Colorado River to rise five meters higher than usual, with beaches increasing by 30%. Engineers point to new evidence indicating another positive result from the controlled release. Native fish are already returning to the river habitat. Fish like the nearly extinct humpback chub. A large fish here. I didn't get a scan on here. A recap. See this fish has some abrasions on the on the breast and on the left side of the fish has a uh, coloration, red color, on all the fins. If this experiment succeeds, Glen Canyon has a chance to rebuild habitats that nurture all life along the river. We have about uh, three or four pairs of peregrine falcons, which are an endangered raptor that lives in this section of the canyon. And uh, there's one that nests right in this area here. They feed on the waterfowl that live in the, live in the, uh, in the river system here and uh, I might be able to try to call one up here. They, their, their call is like this, and sometimes they'll, they'll be attracted to it. Places like Glen Canyon teach us that nature's habitats are precious gifts that need to be carefully considered as we try to meet the needs of expanding communities. <laughs> 